MTD CNC have travelled to Birmingham to Bromford Industries and I'm here with Pete. Now Pete, thank you very much for the invitation to your amazing facility. Now firstly, can you just give me a little bit of an insight into Bromford Industries? Sure, we've been operating as Bromford Industries for about 10 years now. Um, in fact, this is our 10th year as Bromford. Um, we're an amalgamation of separate companies before we became Bromford Industries. Currently we're uh, a, a company that operates in the UK, the USA and in, uh, and in India. Uh, we're a manufacturing company uh, with three sites in the UK and we focus on aerospace, aerospace technology and aerospace components, mainly in the engine sector. So on this particular site here in Birmingham, is it predominantly engine parts that you manufacture? Yeah, we focus on engine parts. We do, uh, we do other aerospace items as well. We, we, we have a, a line which focuses on landing gear as well, but predominantly aero engine components, as you, can see on the, uh, as you can see on the model behind us, which represents pretty much anything that we can or have manufactured in the past or could manufacture again. Um, so yeah, we're, we're into aero engine. That's, that's our core competencies. Now, in 10 years, you know, you've grown significantly with absolutely huge investments. You know, the, the growth is phenomenal, really. You know, what do you put, what are the secrets behind your success? How have you achieved this? I think that predominantly the ownership structure is really important. They're the people that invest in the business and they allow us to spread our wings and do what we do. Um, the investment enables us to go and get cutting edge machinery, which, which brings cost per part down, which is key to OEMs and our customers. It enables us to address uh, technology issues and, and finance about those. It enables us to go and find the right people. And um, so basically ownership structure and then knowledge of the industry in which we operate. Uh, we're lucky, lucky enough to be owned by um, Liberty All Capital Partners who only own aerospace businesses and they only own aerospace manufacturing companies. So they really understand time frames and how it works and what needs to be focused on and the challenges that we face. So the ownership structure and the investment is key to our growth and success, I believe. Um, but it's a balancing act. It's got to be coupled with a lot of other things. It's got to be coupled with your approach. It's got to be coupled with being innovative, fresh thinking, um, how, you, how you deal with life in business in general and manufacturing issues. So it's, if, it was one, if it was one tick box answer, I guess everybody would be doing it. It's not, it's an amalgamation and balance of a lot of different approaches and ideas. And I suppose the people play a huge part in this growth. Um, and, and, and can you give me an example of some of the latest technology and processes that you've invested in to get the new innovations? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the, you'll see later on the, the equipment that we've invested in, in the Akumas. We've invested uh, six million pounds in the last two years. Um, we've got nine Akumas on site at the moment, so we've got more Akumas than anybody else in, uh, in the UK. There are more Akumas scheduled to arrive, um, and that was what I was talking about just now. Just that idea where if we had just a couple more machines, we could focus a couple of machines on roughing operations, which then free up the rest of the machines to focus on distinct operations. It reduces setup, it re reduces the opportunity to, to get things wrong and to lose time. Um, and if we're going to meet the challenges of the industry, which is on a phenomenal growth curve, then these are the kinds of things that we need to be thinking of. Um, at some of the sites in, Brom in Bromford, we've got additive layer manufacturing. And uh, on the LEAP engine, which we're involved with, um, the, there are actually additive layer manufactured parts on that engine. And um, we're using the additive layer um, technology to create uh, jigs and fixtures, which stops us from having to go out into the supply chain. So that gives us control over what we're doing. And we're actually making plastic additive layer manufactured components. And people think, well, how does that work with aerospace? But the way we've done it is we use these things to um, hold uh, work pieces. So it, it just saves time, it gives us control, and it's been used in a, an innovative way. It's a way that I certainly didn't think of. When I, when I saw the additive layer manufacturing machine, I thought, oh, great, we, we can make metal parts, but it's not the way we're using it. So it's just about the way that we're linking up existing technology, clever young people and more mature people who, who work with us, and, um, and now we're just using it to best effect, to give us the best solution. It's great to hear that you're embracing all the latest technology. Have, have you started to uh, embrace Industry 4.0 yet here at Bromford? Yeah, I mean, the, the machines that uh, are on the shop floor here are all live linked, so um, our, our production 
managers and directors have the pleasure of being able to see what's running when they're sitting at home watching, watching the TV, which I'm sure they do. Um, but yeah, I mean, things like that, that, they should become the norm in UK manufacturing. It's not the 1980s anymore. These technologies exist. We're using them. We're seeing the benefits from them. Uh, we can monitor when machines are running, when they're turning, when they're cutting and when they're not. And that's absolutely crucial. If you're going to improve something, measure it first. So it's an aid, it, it's an aid to measurement. Now, I can't help but keep looking at this fantastic engine model here. Now, it represents the components that you manufacture here at Bromford. And can you give me some, uh, or go in depth on some of these particular components to kind of, it really illustrates your capabilities, but you know, can you kind of explain some of the complexities of some of these components, please, Pete? Yeah, sure. I mean, this, this is a, 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 an excellent sales brochure in real life as to what we do or have done in the past. So uh, anything that you can see on that, uh, that model there is a representation of what we can do on various sites. So um, things like the uh, uh, manifold that you can see there, this represents our capability in terms of machining castings, which we do at Leicester to great effect. Um, we've, we've partnered with many OEMs in aerospace, many of the major ones, uh, with long-term contracts specifically for doing components such as that. Um, you'll see on this site in Birmingham the, some of the rings and casings that we specialise on on this facility. Um, the rings that we, we put into the LEAP engine, which is the biggest um, engine programme in history as far as aerospace is concerned. Uh, and we're all across that, that engine, so we're delighted to be there. And, and that's what we're utilising the Akumas that I've mentioned for. Um, across the other sites, uh, for instance at the Ulster site, we manufacture uh, really complex fabricated components. So. Um, Combustion liners and combustion cans are some of the most complex items that you can get on, on an engine and we're uh, prolific on those. Um, we uh, utilise, as I said earlier, on the, the additive layer manufacturing uh, item to, to grip and to hold the work pieces. So it's really ace when, you, when, you, when you're talking to customers and OEMs to be able to say, look at what we do, we can help you in many different areas. But more than that, the, the understanding that kind of crossbreeds itself between the sites because we know about the different parts of the engine and, and, the, and, and the requirements for that manufacturing really helps us to offer a, a solution and that's what, that's what we need to do is offer solutions. I mean, this really highlights your years and years of experience here, doesn't it? It really does. And, and, and you know, some of these items, like I said, we don't manufacture them anymore, but we can manufacture them. We've got the capability. There are guys that work on site who've worked here for 20 years. There are guys at some of the other Bromford sites who've worked for over 15 and 20 years as well, coupled with the youngsters that are coming through. Um, years ago, you know, you used to go to, to conferences and people used to say, what's the biggest challenge that faces you in aerospace? And the answers used to be, well, it's attracting young people, but I really do think that that's changing now. And we've got a great mix at Bromford because we've got the benefit of experienced people with some youngsters coming along. The way that we've done that is by um, embracing things like social media. So you'll find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all the usual channels, uh, Instagram. And what I've realised is that, is that youngsters don't necessarily want to write a CV and an application letter anymore. What they actually want to do is they want to look at stuff online and they want things to be done instantly. Really similar to the way my customers do, they want things to be done instantly. So we use all these different technologies and approaches. And it's like I said a couple of minutes ago, it's about this blend of approaches, not just one strategy we're going to do this. It's a strategy that stretches across manufacturing, um, uh, personnel, um, uh, marketing, sales and, and development. All these different items need to be linked together and meshed. And you know, back to your original question, what's the secret of our success? I think it's the blend and the way that we try to balance all of these different things. They're all important, but we've got to get them balanced, haven't we? And that's, that's what we try to do. You've seen a lot over the years here at Bromford Industries. You've seen a lot of change. Now, with Brom, uh, with Brexit kind of looming yet again, you know, how will this, do you believe, will affect your business? Brexit's complicated, isn't it? And, you know, everybody's got a different view on it. Um, I see uh, issues with um, employment. I, I see, you know, we've got a, a diverse workforce here, which we're really proud of. There's people from Eastern Europe, there's people from Europe. Um, so we need to be conscious of, of the issues that may affect those people. Um, being an aerospace company, you, your customers are all over the world and it's that they're either in Europe or they're out of Europe, so we need to be conscious of how the obvious issues, exchange rates and how we deal with each other, how we import and export, they're all crucial items. Um, so it's, it's interesting, to say the least, <laughs> it's the obvious statement. Um, do we fear it? No, because it'll be what it'll be, we'll get round it, we'll take the usual rounded approach and we'll, we'll deal with it and we'll move forwards. You have many core values here, it's 
clear to see. Um, but what is your mission now here at Bromford moving forward? We, you know, we, we've got a, a, a value structure and, it, and it's about trust, respect, integrity. It's about customer focus. It's about continuous improvement. You know, all of those good things are baked into what we do all day, every day. There is a, there is a, a, a Bromford values wheel which tells people you know every single day this is what we're actually trying to focus on this is our mission this is how we want to actually behave towards each other if we do these basic things then it makes coming to work a pleasure doesn't it and it, it and that's what it should be really we shouldn't be coming here to have a bad time